Well, let's see if I can get this log milled. One of the issues here is this log is not centered on the ways. Kind of a problem. So the uprights are basically pushing the thing too far that way. So either I'm going to have to take the chainsaw and section flat this side, or I have to lower the uprights so that it moves the whole log bodily moves more towards this side of the ways. Probably lower the uprights. Doesn't need much. Not too many knots. The thing about knots is they really mess 
up your 2x4s. So a log like this is probably best as 2x4s. I think it's got the length. So we're looking at this log here. And it's a really big log, and thank God the mill fits over it. But the mill has limitations, as does any mill. So we're limited by the throat here, not just in width, but height. So even if I had the width, I can't go halfway through the log and just take a cut. It doesn't work. You're going to run into that. So I only have seven or eight inches of there, uh, there to work with. So the first thing to do is to take, cut, make a flat on the log, and then turn it. Um, and what you have to do is you have to watch out that you don't run into uh, the stops there. You need space on either side. Most often, because these logs tend to be shifted to this, uh, this side of the ways, you run into that and the bearing. Uh, over there and usually what I'll do then is very simple you notch this with the saw right here as far down as you need to so sometimes the logs have a bump on them uh, that, that that piece tends to run into hopefully not here let's take a cut and see what comes off I'm trying not to have too much waste here on the top I want to get as much of the bark off as possible and again, I hate cutting through bark. Um, this bark looks like it's probably pretty well adhered. I guess I can see if it'll come off. Logs that have been sitting well, the bark tends to fall off no problem. So it looks like the bark is going to come off. Uh, I'm going to take it off. We'll get back to you. One thing you can do is snap a chalk line. If you want to know where you got to remove bark, you can remove it all. That's one option. But you don't have to remove all of it necessarily. It's about 20 inches high. So roughly. Allows me to see where I might want to remove a little extra bark. A little bit extra here. So the bark happens to get thrown over there. That's another thing you got to consider when you're talking sawmills. What are you, you going to do with the waste? Because there is a significant amount of waste. Whether you have a chainsaw mill or a bandsaw mill or even a Lucas mill, there is a significant amount of waste. I mainly take uh, the pants, the pieces that come off the mill, and put them on Craigslist uh, for free. And the, the guys that want pine so that they can have a bonfire show up and they pick it up for nothing. So they help clean up my yard. And that's great. But you know, hopefully you have lots of acres. You can just dump it somewhere and let it rot. Another option. Uh, you can use the sawdust for all kinds of different stuff. You know, flowers, plants, whatever. So, something to consider is what do you do with the waste? What do you do with the product? What do you do with the waste? Things to consider. Alright, so now I have a general idea of where I'm cutting. I re remove some bark. I don't have to remove all of it. I can, obviously, but 
don't necessarily need to remove all of it. I mainly remove the bark on the side where the blade is going through. I don't worry about that side quite as much. Uh, then we do some, uh, some water, some lube, and we go. you can do this you can either count this as a good side which it might actually be it's pretty clean actually um, or you can turn this all the way over um, and put this down and then create another flat on that side so I think I may I think I may turn this for a night so let's do Stop it. It's not really going to move that far. Now, the real problem is, is it too tall? That is awful tall. That right there is as high as the mill head will go up. 
sight when it down. So I can take my chalk line here. So I've reached the limit on the mill as far as height goes. I'm still going to take off a significant chunk. So do I really want to take off an even more significant chunk? Or do I want to just leave it as is and cut from it later? It's a reasonable question. I think I'm actually going to take off a more significant chunk. Meaningful pieces out of it. The problem in this piece of lumber <laughs> is that it is about one or two inches shy of eight feet. And we're going to chalk that up to a nine. What I should be able to do is get some two by tens out of it that I'm going to use for my floor joists in the next shed, and I don't need them to be exactly 8 feet, they can be slightly less, um, yeah, the, the, so these should actually be perfect for that. So let's cut some 2x10s, at least let's plan for that, and uh, see how that goes. Or rather, we're going to aim for 2x10s. longer logs to cut. Anyway, so this one's got a particularly good thickness here, so we can get some significant usable lumber. Um, and this is pretty nice. So let's save this piece for later, which is easier said than done. Because comes off, save it for later. So now you can see that I've actually turned it twice. So I've turned the log this way into the uprights. I've turned it bump, bump. So now it sits on the last cut that I made. The advantage to doing that is my next cut is going to be not through bark. So I don't necessarily need to remove bark. Watch out for the upright. But at this point, I can make my cut, and on this side, I'm not going through bark. And the bottom side and this cut will be perfectly parallel, and then all I have to do is worry about the 90 on the final cut, which, is, which will be over there. You may not be able to see is that the log is positioned too far this way. It's actually too, still too long that way for those particular uprights. Let's change out the uprights. You do, and never hit those with the blade. The blade doesn't go down that far.
hopefully you got it. And it's a pretty significant chunk, isn't it? If you start thinking, gee, what else could I do with this? Put one buys, you put stickers, you cut two by fours. Well, I'll probably end up doing is cutting two by fours into the waist. Let's make a cut. Let's see how that goes. So, nice easy cut here. question is now so what do you realistically want to cut because now is the time to kind of decide um, if I want 2 by 12s I think I, I got it in one by a lot I'm just doing four joists my 2 by 10 that's 14 inches there my 2 by 14 what are you going to do with that it's such a big log there's a lot you can get out of it and you have to decide what you want. And you know the problem with decisions. <laughs> so at this point, what you can do, if you want two by tens, is lower this to 10 inches off the bunk and take a cut. And then you have a 10 inch high piece, flip it back this way and start taking cuts. And that are two inches and you have two by tens, lots of them. See, that was a pretty nice cut there. The bottom cut may not be quite as nice, so you might want to, if you said, you know what, I want to take a two by four width, so four width out of it, you might want to take it out of the other side. So I'll flip this upside down and then take four inches. That might make more sense. You can take two out of this side, two out of the other side. kinds of different stuff you can do. Also depends where the knots are and where the cracks are. Lots of thinking thinking involved. You don't want to make the wrong cut. Don't want to have too much waste. The really funny thing about doing this is I'll make all these wonderful cuts, have an idea of what I want to do with these pieces, and when they dry uh, six months or a year later and I come back to them, I, I look at them and go, I, I have no idea what I I was going to use these for. <laughs> and not half a clip. Great. I think it might be smart to take four inches off the other side, which involves lots of turning, but I think that's probably the best thing to do. Then I can cut two by fours out of that. Then I have two by fours, I have two by tens, the best of all the worlds. So my two by fours have a specific number of turns. For two by fours, I do what are called what I call twelve turn boards. So twelve turns, or twelve quarter actually, down, not quite four inches, but it's a standard for me and for when I build. Um, uh, two inches is, uh, or just shy of two inches is actually six turns. So it's a six turn by twelve turn board. So this is twelve turns down. And gives me just over 10 there. So I'm going to have, I can either do one more turn, have a 13 turn 2 by 4 and have to hit it with the table saw later. Or a better idea is to actually go back up and actually come. 
I'm down one, I have that be my finish cut. I typically do a veneer board and then go down 12 and that'll give me that'll give me a 10 on the bottom and a 4 on the top and I'll be able to turn those sideways and uh, cut two buys off that possibly in the same same run so now I've got a, uh, a 4 inch section on the top a 10 on the bottom Wish me luck with this cut. It's going to be tight. So now I've got this upright, but we've got a problem. The problem is, they're not quite at 90. And when I cut this, uh, and then turn to that, it wasn't quite straight. So, we want to correct that now, if at all possible. The problem is we now have this cut here. So, what do we do? I'm going to take this piece and then put it on this side, and then I'm going to shim up underneath here where it's straight, and then dog this into that, and we'll have it. So this really is all about problem solving. Got the square, good now. So now whatever slices I take are going to be perpendicular to that side. Golden square. I bolt these boards. So what I had to do, I had to shim this. I had to raise that side of the log so the log twisted slightly this way. And once that was raised, then I can dog this in good up against it, flat up against it, and it'll take the same perpendicularity. That's the word. Once I got that, now every slice that I make is going to be uh, truly perpendicular so it's going to be perfect. Um, I'm going to make a cut. I don't want to take too much so I'm just going to take a little bit and see how it cuts. And this is where you absolutely need a really sharp blade because you're making your final cuts here and it's got to be really nice. So the blade will cut perfect I may just swap it right out.
by four, but it's not that you can't use that wall. I'm just going to keep slicing and making boards as they come. You never know what you're going to get after they're nice. Okay, uh, hope you like the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.